Well, good evening, good evening. This is the second episode of Nikos TV, and it's going to be very different from the episode we showed last night. Here's the story. We had some very high-level classical musicians, people that we've worked with, been connected with in the past on Nikos. But not everybody who comes out of Nikos decides to pursue a classical singing career. And so the two guests I've got with me, with me tonight, these two people are kind of in the Scottish trad rock folk kind of, kind of tradition. Um, I'm a great fan of both of them. Both of them were in Nikos some years ago. Now, I want you to imagine what it's like standing on the stage. You've been in for a competition. You're four finalists. And they get to that moment when they say, and the winner of the BBC Scottish Trad Competition for 2018 is, roll the tape, please. Because this is what happened in 2018. So, Minister, ladies and gentlemen, for 2018, the BBC Radio Scotland Young Traditional Musician is Hannah Rarity. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Nikos TV, Hannah Rarity. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing extremely well, Hannah. Thank you for joining us. Have you seen that clip 150 times? I have indeed, yes, yes. And it makes me cringe a little bit every time I see it, but a uh, pretty good memory. Does your, does your mother produce it at Christmas and show it to the relatives? Yes, she does. There's a lot of Facebook sharing as well going on, uh, but I suppose that's nice. She's proud. And we were proud too. We were very pleased when that happened. It was very exciting. And we know you've come back and sung um, at a number of NICUS events. Um, yes. Tell us about your NICUS life. Um, tell, us, uh, uh, tell us when you, when you joined, uh, how long you were around. What, what's the story? Yeah, well, um, I feel like I've got a kind of special relationship with NICUS. I started out when I was eight years old in the West Lothian Area Choir. So I remember getting the letter uh, from my primary school to go for the audition. And um, I have a very clear memory of Lucinda Gagan, who was the head of that choir at the time, um, leading us in some games. And I spent 10 years in the choir. So I stayed till I was 18 in the Area Choir and uh, auditioned for the girls choir, uh, training choir and big Nikos. So I feel like I really kind of benefited from that kind of pyramid system that, that benefits so many young singers. And as well as um, helping me musically and enhancing my musicianship, it just caused me to love singing. Um, so many great experiences came from being a part of it. And um, I don't think if I hadn't been in Nikos, I wouldn't have ended up being a singer or trying to pursue it in any way. So I'm I'm really grateful to the time that I spent as part well, of it. We're, we're grateful that you remember us. I'm always very pleased when I see your biography that you do mention that you were in Nikos at one point. Uh, so so that's, all, that's always very, very, very useful. Were you on any tours with Nikos? Yeah, I did the uh, Eastern Europe. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, that was that one. Um, and uh, we went to the proms twice. I went with you to Mozart Requiem, is the one that I, it sticks out. Oh, um, because, uh, yeah. well, Donald Ronicles was with us last night. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, we fondly remember that extraordinary uh, Mozart Requiem, which is still available, actually. It's still available to see on, on YouTube. Actually, uh, when you go to YouTube, you have to type in an extraordinary Mozart Requiem. That's what you have, really? Where, where where are you now? Where are you currently? Uh, and uh, is everybody around you safe? Yeah, I am east in the east end of Glasgow at the moment. Um, I actually was very lucky. I bought my first flat just before lockdown and I haven't been able to move into it. So I'm going to get to do that soon. <laughs> That's in the oh. east end of Glasgow as well. Um, and yeah, I, I saw mum and dad for the first time in a while and they're safe and uh, I'm with my flatmate. So um, yeah, I'm very lucky everyone's, everyone's doing okay. So I suppose like the rest of us, work has slightly dried up uh, face to face, uh, gigs have kind of shriveled up. Uh, when is the next actual gig you're going to do? Well, yeah, as you're saying, everything's kind of sort of dried up. Um, I am scheduled to go on tour in Austria in September and the tour organiser for that is um, really 
pushing for um, that to go ahead. So um, we're really hoping things seem to be better in Germany and Austria at the moment. They have very few cases and they've been campaigning to get art venues open back up. So if it's safe for us to do so, we will hopefully be going there. Um, I was supposed to be going to Norway and France in August and uh, but fortunately, that's just been postponed to next year rather than cancelled. Oh. So, um, yeah, for now, every, everyone I know that that's working as a, a folky or a musician, things have been put on pause. But um, just look forward to the day when we can get back to, to doing stuff, as I'm sure you are as well. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're having a great time in our virtual course. Uh, we consider you to be one of our singing heroes. And, of course, the answer to the question, when's your next gig, is now, because... You promised you're going to sing me a wee song. I am. Would you like a little ditty? What are you What are you going to sing? Uh, I'm going to do a little night visiting song. A little, you know, it's a wee cute song that I learned from a woman called Anne Nielsen, who um, was a real character and great woman who had a, a vast repertoire of Scott songs, especially um, from the Glasgow area. It's called OTB in my bed and hap it. And it's sort of fitting for now because it's about wanting to be at home, wrapped up, safe, um, knowing that all your loved ones are, are doing okay. Well, Hannah, thank you very much for coming to Nikos TV, second episode. Take it away. Thank you so much. OTB in my bed and hap him in my bed and happy to do what he be locked in my love is and I would lie in the little room what he be in my bed and happy Safe in my bed and happy to do what he be locked in my love and all the household sleeping soon. What he be locked in my love and my lovey locked in mine the door to be locked and the key to be turned and the night to be seven years alive thank you to hannah rarity for that very beautiful and moving singing Change of pace now. The next guest used to be the lead singer of Skippinish. He's currently the lead singer of Tidelines, and he's about to sing for us now, Far Side of the World. Cause I wanna dance with a Highland girl Where the skies reach out for miles I wanna feel the biddies of the Hebrides On the far side of the world Cause I wanna dance with a Highland girl Where the skies reach out for miles I wanna feel the biddies of the Hebrides On the far side of the world Cause I wanna dance with a Highland girl Where the skies reach out for miles I wanna feel the biddies of the Hebrides On the far side of the world Cause I wanna dance with a Highlands girl Where the skies be checked for miles I wanna feel the beneath of the Hebrides On the far side of the world So I'm delighted to welcome Robert Robertson! <laughs> How are you doing Christopher? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. What about you? Where are you? Hey, I'm in Glasgow just now, yeah. Uh, but that, uh, that's not a Glasgow accent. That's a very, that's a far to the, far to the west. It's the first thing I noticed the minute I met you all those years ago. You have this extraordinary accent. Where were you born and where did you, where did you, where did you pick up that accent? Yeah, so I was, I was born and brought up just outside Fort William in the, in the West Islands. Um, but yeah, I've been living down in Glasgow for a, a few years now, but I haven't lost the accent for some reason. <laughs> Oh, don't don't lose the accent. Don't lose the accent. Don't go and live in America. Actually, you'll end up absorbing a lot a lot of American sounds. Uh, my 
my my um, accent's a bit of a an amorphous mess. I think uh, where did you where did you first start uh, with the music? Um, uh, uh, when did you start with the passion for singing? Oh, I mean, I was I had a passion for singing from from the moment that I I could make some kind of noise. I mean, when I was a, a wee kid, I used to play the guitar on, on the, a ladle from the, from the kitchen and yeah. just, just sing along. And I, there's a story that my dad's got that one night uh, we, were in a, a, we were in having a bar meal and I was just a tiny wee kid on like a, a you know, a, a seat, one of the wee kids' seats. And I, I got up and uh, started singing away. And one of the mountain rescue boys back home in Fort William threw down a bonnet, and the next thing people were throwing money into the bonnet for, for this wee kid. You know? So I've always it's always been my passion, yeah. Sounds good. And who's getting emails? Yeah, is that oh that might have come from my phone actually. Oh, it has. Sorry, I put that in airplane mode now. Absolutely, throw it out the window. So uh, the, the the thing is, when did you start? I mean, did did anybody teach you to sing? Have you had any lessons? Where did you where did you formalise your education? Yeah, well, um, once I realised that I had a passion for for singing as a wee kid, my mum um, helped me by um, getting various kind of tutors. But at the start, it was mainly sort of traditional Scottish music that I was singing. Um, and then when I went into high school, I realised the importance of uh, learning more about the voice and um, and so I got a classical uh, singing teacher at, at Fort William, um, Christopher Josie, who, who wow. uh, now I think is based up in Inverness, but at, at the time we were really lucky to have him in Fort William. Um, and uh, then I did a, 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 well actually about that time it was about, I was 12 years old when I started with, with, with Nikos. Um, I auditioned, I came down to Glasgow and met yourself for the first time, Christopher, and um, Always, always a shock. The first time's always a shock. <laughs> well, I, I, I remember being very nervous because uh, for a boy from the Highlands, coming down to the big city is quite a big experience anyway, but to come down and then uh, do this thing for the National Youth Choir was, was quite something. So I really felt like I remember my first week at National Youth Choir, I went away having never spent more than a couple of nights away from my mum and dad and went and spent the week's course in Loreto it was. And... Uh, and when I came back, not only had I learned loads about singing, but I'd, I'd also sort of really matured, I think, over the course of the week, being away with just another group of lads, um, which was if great. This, uh, if this was your first trip away, were you one of the ones that was a bit teary on the first night? Oh, the absolutely. I was, I was teary on the first night, the second night. I, was, uh, I really was, actually. I, I was very homesick the first year. I remember my tutor that year in the wee lessons that you get was, um, was Wilma McDougall. And... Um, she had said to me, she said, Look, she said, I think you've got a, a great voice and that you could actually potentially sing the solo at the end of the week. But by the end of the week, my, I'd been through so much. I think halfway through the week, I, my voice got tired and then I was crying and I was homesick. I was asking for a mum and dad. And so it was some experience. But I, by the end of it, I'd got so much out of it that I was actually desperate for it to happen the following year. <laughs> Which it did. And then you came to Nikos. Um, now you were only actually in Nikos for one year because actually your band, your band career uh, be began began to take off. I remember reading actually um, that you say you owe a lot to the Highland Region Music Service. Um, and I remember reading in a newspaper. And of course, these days they're busily cutting the music services. And um, uh, as as part of this uh, reaction to COVID, when we go back to school in in August, the visiting music services aren't going to be allowed to happen. So. Um, We've got to got to find some way of keeping keeping music going. It's going to be going to be really really a bit bit of a tragedy. Now look, you were in a band called is it Skippinish or Skippinish? Yeah, that if, right the first time. Yeah, Skippinish. Yeah. So, um, and I first heard uh, a song "Walking on the Waves," um, which I absolutely adore. I have it I have it on my phone and I listen to it a lot. And um, I wasn't sure whether we were allowed to play it because you're in a different band now called Tidelines. Uh, but you tell me you're prepared to sing for me, walk on the waves, and you're going to make me a very happy guy. <laughs> very much, Robert. I could do that for you, Christopher. Yeah, I'll grab my guitar. So yeah, this was a song I wrote. It was actually back in 2013. Um, but we still play it with Tidelines and Skippinish themselves, they still play it as well. Um, so it's called Walking on the Waves, as you say. Island in the sunlight, laughter 
I feel like I've had a personal concert, a personal command performance. Robert, thank you so much. <laughs> Great, not a problem, Christopher. I felt like I was back in my National Youth Choir audition. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite a few people watching the programme will know just exactly what that feels like. Thank you for the time, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. And so that's the end of Nikos TV second episode. Hope you've enjoyed that. Very different to the first one. Uh, tomorrow's Nikos TV is very different again. World famous mezzo soprano Karen Cargill, born in Arbroath, trained in Scotland, traveling the world, singing at the highest level with the world's greatest orchestras and conductors. She's the patron of the National Girls Choir and she's agreed to do a masterclass for us tomorrow with two very lucky Nikos members. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much and goodbye.